Windows are one of the prime areas where walls leak. As water runs down the siding and collects on the horizontal surfaces, an improperly flashed window will allow moisture that finds its way behind the siding to get through the weatherization barrier and into the wall. As I mentioned earlier, wall flashing details and roof flashing details are very similar, and window flashing details are no different. As I install this window, I'll start at the lowest point, the sill, and work my way up to the window head, with each layer in between overlapping the previous layer. When I install windows, I'd like to make sure that the window isn't shimmed up off the sill. This allows a free space for any moisture that finds its way onto the rough sill to find its way out through the sill flange. A good practice is to install beveled siding sloping outwards so that there's positive drainage forcing the water towards the outside of the wall. Another option is to install a dam strip so that any moisture that finds its way onto that sill has to go out and can't come back towards the inside of the house. When installing a strip or beveled siding on the sill, it's important to remember that you'll have to oversize your rough opening. As an alternative to beveled siding or a dam strip, I'll lay a heavy bead of caulk as close to the inside edge of the sill as I can and run it up the jams an inch or two on either side. Getting the sill flashing right is the most important detail in the whole process. Any moisture that finds its way into the rough opening will eventually find its way down to the sill. It's important to make sure that the sill is watertight. Flex wrap is a self-healing membrane, so any fasteners driven through it are sealed. The adhesive in flex wrap is a butyl-based adhesive, and unlike the bituminous-based adhesive used on the generic peel and sticks, the butyl-based adhesive is a little more forgiving during the installation process and makes it easier to work with. As I install the flex wrap sill pan, the first thing I'll do is peel off one layer of release paper, center it over the opening, set it down on the sill, and run the jams up six inches on either side. After I rub the sill and the jams in so that the adhesive gets a grab, I'll pull off the second piece of release paper. Now flex wrap is the only material that will make a one-piece closed corner sill pan flashing. After I've peeled off this second piece of release paper, I'll go over to the corner and I'll start to push this corner out and flex it into a closed corner. As I flex it out, I rub it in hard so that the adhesive gets a grab and to keep it in place I'll take a cap nail and drive it right into the corner of the flex wrap. This will hold it in place for that 24 hours while the adhesive gets its full grab. Over on the other corner I'll do the same thing. It's important to start at the inside corner and work your way towards the outside of the corner flexing the wrap so it makes a nice seamless one piece corner. Now before there was flex wrap, window sill flashings had to be cut at the corner and folded down and a piece woven in to get the overlaps. But no matter what you did with the old flashings, you always had an open corner. Flex wrap allows you to fold out that corner so that you have a one piece continuous sill pan. The flex wrap should be at least 40 degrees when installing it. This doesn't mean that you can't work with it at colder temperatures, but just make sure to store it in an area that's at least 40 degrees, pull it out, cut off what you need, and keep it in that warmer area. Don't store it overnight in a pickup truck when it's 10 degrees below zero and expect to pull it out and work with it the next day. In wet conditions, when there's standing water on the sill, it's important to remove all that standing water and wipe the sill down as dry as you can. In really wet, cold conditions, the best way to prepare the surface for the flex wrap is to use a heat gun and make sure that the surface is completely dry before installing the flex wrap. Now we're ready to install the window. Make sure that you always follow the window manufacturer's installation instructions and nailing schedules. Window units should always be installed level and plumb. I like to nail the flange with roofing nails and draw the heads up nice and flush and tight against the flange. A lot of builders like to caulk their windows in place, but just make sure to check with the window manufacturer's installation instructions before caulking. If you do caulk your windows in place, make sure that you leave the bottom sill flange uncaulked. 
Leaving this bottom sill flange uncaulked provides a weep area for any moisture that finds its way onto the sill to work its way out through that uncaulked sill flange. And make sure that you use an elastomeric latex caulk. Elastomeric latex has the best compatibility with the Tyvek system. After the window's nailed in place, it's a good idea to operate the unit to make sure there aren't any problems. The next step is to install the jam flashing. Straight flash is used to cover the jam fins on a window unit. It's important that the jam flashing extend at least two inches above the window head and at least to the bottom of the flex wrap sill flashing. If it extends beyond, it's not a problem. Some builders like to use contractor's tape instead of straight flash. The problem using contractor's tape is that every fastener driven through the contractor's tape becomes a potential leak, where every fastener driven through straight flash is sealed. I like to use a J-roller to roll the flashing tape in. It applies a lot more even pressure over the entire surface of the flashing membrane. After I've installed the jam flashing, the next step is the head flashing. Now you'll notice that I folded the head flap up out of the way. This allows me to install the head flashing directly over the head flange and adhered directly to the sheathing. That way, if any moisture finds its way behind the Tyvek and starts to migrate down the sheathing, it'll encounter the head flashing, come over top of the head flashing, and back out onto the secondary drainage plane where it belongs. After the head flashing's in place, I'll take the head flap untape it and fold it down over the head flashing. And now I'll skip tape it at the window head. I skip tape it because if any moisture were to land on the window head and I taped this flap solid all the way across, it would trap the moisture inside. By skip taping it, it provides weep holes for any moisture to find its way out and again back onto the secondary drainage plane. After I skip tape it, I'll tape the 45 degree cuts I made to fold it up out of the way. And now we have a window unit that's installed and flashed properly. Now that we have a properly installed and flashed window, here's a few key points to remember. Avoid reverse laps. The higher layer should always overlap the lower layer. Don't X cut openings. Instead, make a level head cut followed by an inverted Y cut. Now that we have a properly installed and flashed window, here's a few key points to remember. Avoid reverse laps. The higher layer should always overlap the lower layer. Don't X-cut openings. Instead, make a level head cut and finish with an inverted Y cut. Use flex wrap to create a one-piece self-healing sill pan and leave the bottom flange uncaulked to provide a weep area to allow moisture to find its way out. At the window head, cut and fold the home wrap out of the way and make sure that the head flashing adheres directly to the sheathing. The Tyvek Complete Weatherization System is a proven solution for keeping walls dry. Remember, the goal is to keep water out of walls. And since no siding is waterproof, it's important to provide a way for the moisture to get behind siding to find its way out. Now that you've seen the Tyvek Complete Weatherization System installed, I'm sure you can appreciate that it's a great way to keep walls dry.